my name is Leah. I know speaking today that we don't all come from the same background. We don't all have the same privilege and we don't all have the same access to opportunity. So I'd just like to share my story and I hope that it resonates with some of you. I was adopted from China at the age of nine months and I grew up in a small ethnically homogenous town in um, rural Quebec, around 4,000 people, where I was one of the only Asians. I really loved studying. I loved school, um, but that made me a bit of a social outcast. And so I didn't have a lot of friends in high school. I, in my senior year of high school, I researched scholarships and opportunities to go to college because I couldn't afford a lot of schools in Canada. And I received a, almost a full scholarship to go to Wharton at the University of Pennsylvania to study business. And from there, I thought I had achieved my dream. I was in an amazing institution, but I was very competitive and I struggled with the recruitment process. I struggled to figure out what I wanted to pursue post-college. And I applied to probably 50 companies and ended up with a lot of interviews because I had worked very hard to have a good GPA, but I got rejected time and time again. I didn't have a lot of mentorship or coaching to figure out how to navigate the networking space and as an introvert, it was really hard for me to pretend to be social and I just fake a smile and present myself and tell my story in compelling terms at all of these whining and dining events. And so I probably didn't stand out in the crowd. And when I started to interview, I got very discouraged and um, I ended up with some mental health problems of anxiety and depression because it was just so draining to get rejected. And I didn't understand why everything that I had done inside the classroom was so disconnected to the recruitment process. Why were these employers judging me based on a couple of rehearsed interview questions instead of all of the work that I had invested in my education, all the assignments, all the projects, all the leadership positions and clubs? And I wanted to fix this problem because I spoke to other students and they said that their recruitment process was one of the most stressful and anxiety inducing periods of their college experience. And finding a job shouldn't be like that. It should be an exciting journey where you learn more about your strengths, passions, and gifts and how to apply them in the workforce. And so this gap in the market led me to start Canduit. Canduit is an ed tech platform for project-based learning in higher education, where we allow students to apply their skills in short-term online projects. So these projects may only last like a couple of months my students have a chance to do them starting in freshman year with top employers and they get mentorship and coaching and also earn scholarships throughout the process. And this iterative approach allows students to get a good sense of what they want to do post-college. Do you want to start, uh, do you want to be a brand um, manager? Do you want to go into marketing analytics? Do you want to do um, social media marketing? And these are all very different fields, but by doing short-term projects, um, on the side while studying, you get a chance to build connections and actually apply your skill set to figure out what is a good fit for you. And the employers are doing the exact same thing. The campus recruiting industry is a $10 billion industry. But today, recruiters are using outdated assessment methods that are not correlated with on-the-job performance. And actually, work samples are the number one predictor of on-the-job performance. So my co-founder uh, comes from a recruiting background and he has founded his own recruitment firm and spent many years in the industry. So we combined forces to start the idea of Canduit. And it's been an incredible journey and I'm going to talk about some of what we learned um, through the process of starting a venture in the ed tech space. Why is this important? Education is the foundation of the future. And yet the methods that we're using to educate the future workforce are ineffective. Only 5% of textbook learning is retained and 70% of knowledge is gained through experience. Additionally, in the US, brick and mortar institutions are losing relevance and they don't have the best ROI proposition. It can cost $50,000 a year for a student to go to college and that has led to a, a student debt crisis of $1.6 trillion. If college is so expensive, it's definitely excluding a lot of first-generation students, students of color, students with disabilities, and people from other underprivileged backgrounds. 
And yet there's not a lot of people who are willing to invest in this space unless it leads to a large financial outcome. So this is a problem that we faced starting out. Although the data is definitely out there, it can be hard to make the business case for diversity, especially when you're trying to convince investors who are looking for 100x return to look at students who may be outside the formal education system, students who may be from remote or rural parts of the North America or from developing countries. So that was one of the initial challenges that we faced was how to get capital. And when you're starting out and you have nothing, and you're trying to build a prototype, there are a couple options that you look at. Some of them include bootstrapping, angel investors, or friends and family round, crowdfunding, or grants, and other forms of business plan competitions. And one of the best things that we did is um, looking for sources of capital that did not take equity. And if you do your research and you're willing to potentially relocate to invest in another economy and another educate innovation ecosystem, there are lots of opportunities out there. So I ended up going to Santiago, Chile to participate in Startup Chile for about nine months. And Startup Chile is one of the best um, grant-based accelerators in the world run by the government of Chile. And so we were able to access around $100,000 in capital from Startup Chile and also uh, we were able to test out Canduit in the Chilean ecosystem, which opened up an entirely new Latin American market. And that's something I personally never expected that our product would resonate there. But when I arrived in Chile, I started talking to students. I realized that the prog- problem is even greater there because they've never heard of concepts like project-based learning. And there is no campus recruiting system at most of the universities. If the students don't get an internship, they often have to repeat their entire year or go abroad. And it's also very unequal. It's A lot of it is based on family connections or where you went to school. And so the wealth of the family matters a lot in terms of access to jobs. And so these are problems that we were able to address by being there and by really understanding what local students were feeling and what problems they faced. And so we were able to start pilots with Ripley, Basic E, which is one of the major brands, uh, major banks in Chile, as well as Uber Eats, able to collaborate with the University of Chile and the University of Santiago on, on marketing and graphic design projects. That was the first time they'd ever done something like this. So we have another 10 universities in South America on our waiting list. We've expanded into Guatemala and Peru, and now we work with around 30 universities in the U.S. So that leads to my number two point, which is that it's really important to have empathy. Empathy as a leader and empathy for your core user. And that we only got by talking to people. We talked to around over 100 students, university administrators, deans, heads of career services. We also talked to uh, people at startups, people at nonprofits, the directors of recruiting and diversity inclusion at large Fortune 100 companies to understand what they're looking for and I think personally that what I get the most joy out of is connecting different players and creating win-win situations that mutually help everyone achieve their goals and create value. And the needs of the end user are, is something that is, like the needs are always changing. They're not static. And that's something that has been reinforced during COVID as we've had to make a lot of adaptations because a lot of students had their internships and jobs canceled and a lot of universities didn't have the virtual infrastructure to accommodate the matching process between students and organizations. So that's where we came in because we already had the tools built out. We already had video conferencing, discussion boards, um, project matching algorithms. And so we were able to partner with them and provide services. And we're continuously asking students to let us know what they're interested in. So we did a survey where students express interest in resume and cover letter reviews as well as webinars on how to break into different industries. And so we're hosting real sessions where people can hear um, how young professionals from diverse backgrounds actually broke into some of the top companies, what struggles they faced, and have really open-ended, vulnerable conversations, which is what I think needs to happen to break some of the stigma associated with admitting weakness and facing failure. And 
you know, this one thing, I guess that leads to my third and final point, which is don't be afraid to make pivots as well. As you're going along this journey and collecting user feedback, don't come in assuming that you have the solution to solve education because you don't, you haven't experienced all the needs out there and the needs are evolving. And so as people give more advice on features they'd like to see, we've continuously tried to build for our users and we've changed our business approach, our business plan multiple times. And that's something that definitely takes, um, it definitely is hard because you, you, learn to love this venture and you learn to be very invested in it and sometimes you have to change your approach while staying true to your mission vision and values so here's my final point we are a unique voice in education as young people some of us have struggled to enter the education system others are struggling going through it or transitioning to the job market but i think the education um investment market, startups in the space, larger companies all need to hear from students or prospective students who are interested in continuously developing new skills and learning. I personally want to keep hearing your story and I hope you'll share and let us know how we can help you.